Jeeve, my name is Rowan, and I'd like to show you around my home country of Ireland, its natural wonders and hidden secrets. This week, I'll be showing you around our stunning coastline, secluded beaches, and ancient ruins. Sit back, relax, and let's explore the Dingle Peninsula. Located in County Kerry, on the southwest coast of Ireland, the Dingle Peninsula is the most westerly point on the island of Ireland. Dingle's a Gaeltuck region, meaning Irish is the most commonly spoken language, although English is widely spoken in the main town. The peninsula was once home to an ancient tribal kingdom, the Cork of Guivna, who gave the peninsula its Irish language name. There are more than 2,000 archaeological sites on the peninsula, from the clifftop fortress of Cahar Conry in the Slievemish Mountains to the Riesk monastic citadel on the western coast. But today, we're going to start in Inch Beach, near the lovely town of Anincha. With beige sands, crystal blue waters, and lovely views of the Iveira Peninsula, it's the ideal place for a relaxing stroll. It's also a really popular surfing destination with decent waves all year round. Heading west along the coast, we come to the village of Anaskal, home to the South Pole Inn and legendary Antarctic explorer Tom Crean. During the doomed 1910 race to the South Pole, he was responsible for the rescue of two teammates, Lashley and Evans. After marching 2,500 kilometers by foot across the ice and snow, his teammates were struck down by scurvy and exhaustion. Crean volunteered to hike the last 55 kilometers alone, through a blizzard to get rescue. Two years later, Crean was with Erna Shackleton when his ship was crushed in the ice. After landing in Elephant Island, Crean and Shackleton set off in a makeshift boat for a whaling station on South Georgia. They were blown onto the wrong side of the island, had to slide down a 2,000 meter high drop, finally reaching the station and organizing the rescue of the stranded crew. When Tom Crean finally returned to Anaskal, he saw the village only had nine pubs and decided it desperately needed a tenth. After driving for 15 minutes, we come to Kinnard and its secluded beach. It's a great place for a little swim, and the more adventurous visitors can kayak out to Onstarok, the large sea stack in the bay. Then we come to the town of Dingle, which gave the peninsula its English language name. Founded by the Normans, Dingle was once a walled mercantile city with many castles, enough to rival medieval Galway. Today, it's a charming fishing port, whose laid-back vibes attract plenty of artisans and creative types. It's the perfect base of operations to explore the rest of the peninsula. What's so special about Dingle Town? Well, while there are plenty of tourist towns in Ireland, Dingle is possibly the most Irishy in an indigenous sense. Old Gaelic festivals such as Bealtaine and Laundraline are still held there every year, and the town still uses old Irish orthography, meaning we can see fodas over the vowels and bulches over consonants. There's a sacred stone, the Boulon Moor, on Main Street, nearly four meters in length. During penal times, when the Irish Catholics are being persecuted under British rule, the local people would leave sand in the holes to let the priest know it was safe to perform mass. You can even see our native Oam alphabet on the side of buildings. However, most Irish people associate Dingle with Fungi the Dolphin, Ireland's most famous bottlenosed resident. There used to be daily boat trips out to visit him, but he sadly passed away in October 2020, after nearly 40 years of welcoming visitors to the harbour. Today, tourists come to visit the pubs, the craft workshops, and the excellent seafood. They also come for scoops of Murphy's ice cream and their uniquely Irish flavours. Now with stores in Dublin, Galway and Killarney. Personally, I really like the sea salt vanilla or the caramelised brown bread. Next to the nave Muira Church is on Dysart, home to the Irish Institute for Education and Celtic Culture. Inside, you'll find a library and a visitor centre, a deep dive into Dingle's heritage, and the nearby garden labyrinth is a really nice place to relax and drink in the sunshine. But if I have to be honest, my favourite place to visit is the Ocean World Aquarium, home to Ireland's largest collection of sharks and penguins. Some of my earliest childhood memories are of coming here on a rainy afternoon hearing the droplets pattering on the roof and I'd explore these underwater tunnels. It just had this refreshing, dreamlike quality, this cosy feeling of naive wonder, 
taking shelter from an Atlantic storm. As you leave Dingletown, you're offered with a pair of spectacular driving routes. To the north is Connor Pass, the highest mountain road in Ireland. First time I visited was in 2007, and I still have my old shaky camcorder footage. It's a narrow, twisting road with a 400 meter high drop, snaking along the sheer cliffs and quarry lakes between the towns of Dingle and Kilmore Cross. The route brings you out to Castle Gregory, on the north side of the peninsula. At the end of a five kilometer long tombolo is a collection of islands known as Namakari, where the local farmers keep their sheep. The largest island, Illinatonic, features a 1,500 year old monastic citadel. Taking the western road will lead you onto the Slayhead Drive, a looped road which brings you out to what was once considered the edge of the known world. And yes, this is part of the Wild Atlantic Way, the world's longest coastal driving route. Our first stop is the beach at Kyaun Tra, also known as Ventry. In good weather, you'll often find people swimming or horse riding, but if it's raining, there's a museum nearby with about 6,000 years worth of archaeological history. Further on down is the Iron Age fortress of Dunbeg, perched on a cliff overlooking the Atlantic. Most of the fort has now fallen into the sea, but if you really want to immerse yourself in ancient Ireland, there are some exceptionally well-preserved buildings at Aidan O'Hualacon's farm in Fahan. This is a Clochon, a uniquely Irish style of building. Built without mortar, they were a common type of house during the Gaelic Age. In English, we sometimes refer to them as beehive huts because of their shape, although I like to think of them as stone igloos. In ancient times, there was an entire city of these Clochon, spread out across the sloping coastline. Archaeologists have discovered more than 400 of these buildings in Dingle, along with nearly 20 underground passageways. Of course, this being a farm on the west coast of Ireland, there are some very fluffy, woolly residents living nearby. And as part of the tour, Aidan will offer visitors a chance to feed a hungry sheep and hold a baby lamb. After looping around the towering cliffs at Slay Head, we come to a viewpoint called Ryark Nihilon. Here, you'll find some spectacular views of the Blasket Islands, a cluster of six islands out in the Atlantic, inhabited until a terrible storm in 1954. Sitting on the rugged coastline, gazing out over the blue Atlantic and the offshore islands while seabirds circle overhead, it's like you've fallen into a postcard. Nearby is the village of Dunqueen, once home to Dolores O'Reardon, the lead singer of the Cranberries. Here you'll find Kumi Noel Beach. On a quiet day in sunny weather, it's a little paradise. Nearby is the Pier of Doon Queen, the gateway to the Blasket Islands. Islanders would often climb these steps in the past, carrying their Kurok boats on their backs. This is where the seasonal boat tours depart, bringing visitors out to the Blaskets. These islands were once known as Ilan na Fuertre, named after the local Ferretor tribe. The modern name comes from the old word the Viking raiders used for the area, Brasker, meaning a dangerous place. But for the native Irish, it was home. The largest island is on Blaskade Moor, with Little Beganish to the east. Blaskade Moor was once home to some of the most famous writers of modern Irish language literature, like Peg Sayers, Weir O'Sullivan, and Thomas O'Critton. In Ireland, we often study their work as part of our high school curriculum. To the north is Inish Tuishkirt. Locals say he looks like a sleeping giant. To the south is Inish Vicolon, once home to a Gaelic monastery, and later purchased by a former Irish Taoiseach. Beside it is Inish Nabro, with its spooky cathedral rocks. Finally, there's Ontirucht, rising like a black pyramid out of the Atlantic Ocean. It's the most westerly point in the Republic of Ireland. The unique lifestyle of the Blasked Islanders can be explored inside the visitor centre on the mainland, the Unad the Boscade. Personally, I really liked learning about the Nive Oaks, the traditional fishing boats of the Blasket people. Nearby is a walking trail which loops around the cliffs of Dune Queen, allowing visitors to explore the desolate landscape. Believe it or not, this was the filming location for a movie called Ryan's Daughter. The trail leads all the way out to Dune Moor, the most westerly point in the Irish mainland. If you keep swimming for another 3,000 kilometres, eventually you'll reach Canada. But for now, we'll continue north towards Ardna Cotna, taking in some lovely views of Keown Chabale, where the recent Star Wars movies were filmed. 
Here, we can find examples of Dingle's ancient monastic buildings, the most famous of which being the Galarus Oratory, built more than a thousand years ago. Like the Clochon we saw earlier, the dry stone building is watertight and shaped like an upturned boat. It was a pilgrimage centre during the Gaelic Age, but there's a local tradition as well. If you can climb out through the small window at the back of the chapel, you'll be guaranteed a place in heaven. But if you want to escape the crowds, you can head to the monastic ruins of Kilmacader, where you'll find chapels, ohm stones, and an ancient Gaelic sundial. Kilmacader is one of the starting points for Cusson the Naev, an 18 km long pilgrimage route up to the top of Knock Brandon, also known as Mount Brandon. It's Dingle's highest mountain and Ireland's eighth highest peak. The mountain is named after St. Brendan the Navigator, Ireland's most famous monastic sailor. Sometime between 512 AD and 530, St. Brendan left Ireland and used the islands of the North Atlantic as stepping stones and set foot in North America. By all contemporary accounts, St. Brendan was the first European to reach North America. More than 500 years before Leif Erikson, and nearly a millennium before Christopher Columbus. There were some very interesting things recorded during St. Brendan's voyage, such as an island with rivers of golden fire and flame-throwing demons. Many speculate that these were in fact the volcanoes of Iceland, and when they're talking about crystal pillars floating in the ocean, they're in fact talking about icebergs. And Brandon can be a very challenging climb, but when the sky is clear, the views from the peak are truly breathtaking. When evening falls, in my opinion, there is no better place to go than one of Dingle's many pubs. There's Androchy Bjog, which offers trad music every night. There's Foxy John's, which still doubles as a hardware store. But my personal favourite is Dick Max, more than 120 years old. Excellent ambience, colourful snugs, as well as their own brewery. If you're fond of dark beer, I highly recommend their coffee stout. In the old days, pilgrims would come from far and wide to lose themselves in Dingle, and I guess some things never change. As a child, I was often brought on family holidays to Dingle, but it was only after travelling the world I came to appreciate how special it truly is. Next time, we'll be moving away from Ireland's peaceful Atlantic coast to the largest city on planet Earth, where we'll find temples, dragons and sumo wrestlers. But don't worry, we'll be exploring more of Ireland again soon, so leave a comment down below and let me know where you'd like to see in the next video. Thank you so much for coming along with me. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for another adventure. See you next time!